All right, welcome back to the nightly sports call. Let's get out to the phone lines. Gene, you want to get right. out to the phone lines? Here we go, sure. Okay, all right, let's see what we got tonight. It's like rolling the dice, right? It's almost like one of those wheels that you spin, like, does it fall onto the right caller sometimes on the show? All right, but we're going to go with line one, David in Finleyville. How you doing, David? Good, how are you? Thanks Thank for taking my call. Um, I want to ask yours and uh, Gene's opinion if the Steelers might be overlooking the Bengals and the Ravens for that December 17th matchup with the Patriots. I'll hang up and listen to you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot, Dave, for your call. I, you know, even uh, sometimes teams overlook teams to get to other teams. You saw that, I think, with Miami in the ACC championship. Uh, they were overlooking Pitt. They just weren't up for that game. Um, but in the NFL, you know, I, I, I don't think team, they're not supposed But sometimes it happens with the Steelers. But I don't think just because the Steelers are coming out and talking about the Patriots that they're overlooking the Bengals and they're overlooking the Ravens. I don't either. I mean, uh, the Steelers always play well at Cincinnati. They're very comfortable there. Uh, I think they're a team that can't wait to get there. Uh, then they have Baltimore at home. Uh, the Steelers always uh, are <coughs> intensely involved with uh, the Ravens game. So, no, the answer to your question is no, I don't. Yeah, and I, I, I agree with you. I don't think they're looking past. These are teams that they play every year. Uh, this Cincinnati right. game is, is a big rivalry. You know, you got Burfecht who's going to try to sure. take everyone's head off. Right. You know, this is a team that they do not want to lose, lose to. Same with Baltimore. So I think these are two good games that are sandwiched in between, you know, now and the Patriots game. So, yeah, I don't buy that they're not looking. Uh, look, they're, they're, they're looking at every game. You know, one game at a time attitude, but they also have games circled. There's no question about that. That's just being human. Um, all right, back out to the phone lines. Let's go up to Charlie and Carrick. How you doing, Charlie? Hi. The fact that Eli Manning is benched, could that affect our Ben, maybe his confidence? What do you think Ben's take on Eli being benched is? Gene, uh, today Ben actually talked about that in yeah. the locker room. Ben had some nice things to say about Eli. Yeah. I mean, they were in the same draft class. Right. And, you know, Manning has some good stats, pretty comparable to Ben. And uh, – you know, I mean, what did he, I forget the exact thing Ben said, but he was a, you know, it's a tough situation, kind of something like that. And, you know, it's been, it's, it's not Eli's fault. And I know the man, that the Giants want to move on from Manning. And I read today, I think it was Adam Schefter said that, that they're, he's looking for a release. He wants the Giants to release him, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I haven't watched much of the Giants this year, so I don't know how bad or well Eli's playing. I mean, he's been a great pro. He's led that uh, organization to a couple of Super Bowl wins against the Patriots, by the way, which is, uh, you know, it's hard to do. Um, so, yeah, I feel bad for him. What possible impact it has on Ben, I don't really think I understand that question. If it's, um, does Ben now think, yeah, he's getting old too and he's going to be benched, uh, you know, I, I don't think that would even yeah. enter his mind. Yeah, Ben's not being benched. I don't think really Ben's even really thinking about it. The only reason he asked about it was, be, it was talked about is because someone asked him about it. Um, but, yeah, I don't, I don't think it affects Ben one bit. You know, I, I think if he's in a different situation, Eli will be signing somewhere else next year. Or if he is released, granted a release, maybe someone will pick him up and maybe he'll do what his brother did and win another Super Bowl on another team. I mean, good quarterbacks are hard to find in the NFL right now, and I think there'd be a lot of teams lining up for his services. All right, I was looking up the international pool money, um, and the Pirates are fourth. They have two some million and um twins are ahead of them at third yankees are second and the rangers are at first so you have three american league teams and it seems like this otani guy is more of an american league kind of player because he's a power pitcher and when he doesn't pitch he potentially could be a designated hitter because he's a power hitter too potentially but uh, i don't think teams will want to do that I, I think they'll i think he'll come to the united states as a hitter do you oh you think as a hitter not as a pitcher yeah all right, um, out to the phone lines. Let's go out to Chris in Elliott. How you doing, Chris? Hey, gentlemen, how we doing? Good, thanks for calling. Uh, uh, well, I tell you what, uh, for the Pirates, I, we miss Chung Ho so bad. But uh, meanwhile, besides that, uh, Mark K has not filled out his potential yet. He's, he's kind of like, he, he's supposed to do all kinds of good stuff. He never, never, runs out, never runs out the first base. He's a lot of gags, watches the ball. It's a lot of he's gags. He's a park home run. So we trade him and trade Cole, Derek Cole, and uh, Glasgow and get some. We, we, we need six fifth back. <laughs> hey, I appreciate the call, uh, Chris, from Elliot. But 
Uh, you can't trade everyone, right? You can't trade Marte. You can't trade Cole. You can't trade I all these guys. I tried to trade Marte last year. And you did. Nobody uh, paid any attention to me. But you uh, wanted to trade him for different reasons. I did. I wanted to trade him because of the PED thing. But uh, I don't regard Starling Marte as a, a terribly good player. I know the year before he led them in war, uh, and he can be a good player, and he has got great skills. But, you know, I just don't think he's very good. And I don't see any improvement in him. Now, obviously, he's hurt by missing 80 games. But, uh, you know, if there's a guy that I'd like the Pirates to get rid of, it's still him. Yeah, and Zhang Ho Gung, I mean, he didn't do anything in winter ball. The team cut him. So, well, that's because I mean, he hasn't played in a long time. Yeah, but still, I mean, don't the Pirates have something to say about that? Keep him around? Keep I him don't in? know. And that, that's, I think, who knows if this guy's ever going to get back to the United States. And I wouldn't count on him. I don't think, yeah, he might have been a big loss because he was in the top three in war, I think. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. uh, he was a good player for the Pirates, and uh, he got hurt, of course, and that, that hurt, that... Uh, Chicago. You know, that, yeah, that set him back. Uh, but, you know, while he was here, he was a good player. All right, let's go out to Greg in Morningside. How you doing, Greg? Greg, Greg, you there? I'm here. Go ahead, Greg. You're on the okay. TV. Which one is... You? Greg, you on? Rich, how are you tonight? Good, thanks for calling. Sorry. Rich, real quick. Go ahead. Talking about Andrew McCutcheon in attendance dropping if they trade him. Are you talking about Andrew McCutcheon or Mickey Mantle? Uh, well, I'm talking about Andrew 31 McCutcheon. 31 years old, Rich. Great. With 203 career home runs. I, I get it. He is the third worst defensive <laughs> center fielder in baseball by those advanced analytics. And yeah. What are people talking about? Greg, I, I'm just saying, you know, his persona, his uh, popularity. I'm not saying what he actually does on the baseball field. He's the biggest star, maybe despite your statistics, he's the biggest star, hands down, on the Pirates, and he's the biggest attraction for someone to come see him. And that's what I'm getting to. I'm not basing this on his stats, and I'm not comparing him to Mickey Mantle or anyone like that. I'm just saying he's the only one that people want to see right now. And if they trade him, then I think fans will, I think fans will lose it. The, the small amount of fans that are buying season tickets right now, if they trade him, I think they'll lose it. That's all we're saying. Nobody mentioned Mickey Mantle. It's a, it's a different topic. Yeah, yeah. He's not even in the same conversation as Mickey Mantle. Maybe he is tonight on this show. He, yeah, he, well, I know. You're right. All right, let's go to John and Brooklyn. That's what makes this show great. I know. We love this show. This show, hey best guys, show at 1035. Show. Thanks. Hey, uh, on that Patriots game with the Steelers, um, yeah, if we beat them at home, then that means we got to beat them again in the playoffs. And I don't think it's going to be possible that we beat them twice. No, I we don't. Rather lose now. It, well, we no, John. This is why you don't want them to lose because if they lose now, they there's no chance of them having home field advantage throughout the playoffs. You know, I, John. Thanks for the call, and I really appreciate it. But I don't like I don't like saying you got to lose now because you, you, you're risking losing in the playoffs. I mean, you you just keep on winning. And the fact that you need to beat New England to have home field advantage in the playoffs, and that's your only chance, I think, maybe not your only chance, but a better chance beating them here than in New England, if it gets there. In theory. But again, even if you beat them here, that doesn't necessarily mean you have home field advantage. Other things have to happen. Also, if you lose to them here and you don't have home field advantage, you don't necessarily have to play them up there because it's possible that somebody else would beat them. I would remind you that the last two times the Steelers made it to the Super Bowl, somebody else beat New England. That's a way to get there, too, and there's nothing wrong with it. Yeah, and, and I'm glad you brought that up, Gene, because I was just going to talk about that. You know, I think Kansas City has a shot at beating Patriots, you know, maybe because it's in the Steelers' head or they don't match up well. I mean, they're trying to do – they're trying to – you know, they, they built their team on trying to match up with the, the Patriots a little bit better Everybody. with Joe Hayden. Everybody did. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you're not necessarily going to see them in the postseason, but it's imperative, I think, that they win this home game because then they control their own destiny. Yes, the Steelers could lose to the Bengals or the Ravens or any one of these other games, but if they, if they lose to the Patriots and the Patriots continue to win, then they will not have home field advantage in the postseason. All right, got to take a break. Back